Hey guys, welcome out to the shop today. Uh, gave uh, little man his uh, birthday toolbox yesterday and he absolutely loved it. He's already starting to reorganize all the tools. We cut up all the packaging and he's throwing stuff around and is absolutely loving it. So I'm happy that uh, that worked out well. The refinish came out really nice and it looks like a new toolbox and then all the little bit of tools that we put inside really, really topped it off. Uh, not really having anything major to work on this week and I've had this chainsaw right here. It's a Husqvarna uh, 50 Rancher or Rancher 50 something like that and um, I've had it in the shop for quite a while and haven't really messed around with it. I think that I made a video on it before trying to start it and then I thought it was just a, uh, a dud chainsaw but uh, went ahead and uh, tried to fire it up the other day and it started chugging a little bit except one thing that is wrong with it is that the uh, return spring is not working correctly so i figured today we could uh, try to dive in on this one and see if we can even get it running like i said more than likely this is not going to run i think this is going to end up being a uh, parts chainsaw but if it does run that would be fantastic i'd love to have it in the shop this is a uh, really fairly big bar. I think it's like a 20 inch or something like that, which uh, which is nice for uh, cutting up logs and stuff like that. But uh, I'm gonna get you guys set up and we're gonna go ahead and take this cover off and uh, maybe just replace that return spring for the pull cord and see if it'll start or uh, we'll have to go from that point. A little bit of a backstory on this Husqvarna chainsaw right here before we start diving into it. I uh, bought it off of Amazon, or not Amazon, off of eBay, or no, off of Facebook for $30 and it was listed up as a parts mower and said that it wasn't gonna run, that it was no good, but it had parts. So I took a chance on it because it was Husqvarna. I said, you know what, I might as well take it because I can at least sell, you know, the bar and some of the parts off of it if it's not running and uh, make my money back regardless. And so I brought it home, started working on it, couldn't get it running, got frustrated with it and threw it to the side as a parts chainsaw. I was just going to keep it anyway and use the parts off of it. So lo and behold, I dug into it another day and uh, found out that it had absolutely no compression. That was the reason for uh, it not starting. So I went ahead and searched all over the place for like two or three weeks, couldn't find anything. Finally, I found a complete top end 44 centimeter or millimeter uh, cylinder and uh, piston and all that. So I went ahead and bought it and uh, put it on and still had absolutely nothing happening with it. And that is, uh, I tossed it back in the corner and gave up on it and uh, I put it up for sale again and listed it as a parts mower or parts chainsaw myself. But uh, I don't want to do that. I want to actually see if it will even run whatsoever today. Whether it runs good or not, I don't uh, really care today. I just want to see if I can get it running because it's been a, uh, a struggle for me to get it going and uh it's been in parts for for most of the time uh this past week i finally just put it back together like i said i was going to put it up for sale so that's where we're at today it's got a uh, new cylinder and piston on it um and uh let's jump in and see if we can even get this thing to start up so the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get the actual side plate off so we can look at the return spring I can't remember if when I got this if it had trouble already with the return spring or what was going on but uh, here it is right there and if you click it like you wind it up it goes fairly easy and then pulling it, it has that spot but then it starts breaking loose 
We'll go ahead and take this off of here. I don't know if the thing just isn't bent right or if it's clicking together wrong or what. There is the spring. Let me bring you guys closer. So there is the inside of the spring. And it's supposed to hook onto this corner right here. Except for some reason, reason it keeps on popping around the corner engage. I wonder if it needs to be bent more. So let me go ahead and try to see if I can bend that little piece. Or some needle nose pliers here. So it's seated down now. And it seems like it's a lot tougher getting it rewound this time than it was before. I think it is because of that hook that's on there now. Let's go ahead and put this back together real quick and we'll see what it feels like. Just pulling it without the machine on. Nope. So, as soon as I tightened that up, it, started, it left all the string right back out. I think that return spring is pretty much shot. I think it's got too much um, play in it to where it can just push out around the corner. Because even if, if you try to tighten it up, let me see if I can get you guys to see. If you tighten it up, it still can push quite a ways to one side. And I think that's what's happening is it's just grabbing it and pushing it off to that one side. So I think that is shot. So let me, I got another parts chainsaw right here. And I'm almost wondering if I can get that return spring out of here and put it on the other one. But I think this, just a garbage one I don't really know anything about this chainsaw so but I do know that the uh, there's no, there's nothing really holding it on together and I think the home light is a cheaper version or cheaper uh, chainsaw and it's pretty pretty rough condition and I can always get a uh, another Return spring if I need it, if this one doesn't work like I want it to. All I'm truly trying to get is the spring out of it, but I think that the springs might be different sizes too. If you guys have ever messed with springs, you know that they are not fun to rewind after they've came out. This one's going to spring right apart. We're going to try our best to get it out of here. You guys see that mess? That's going to be fun. Let me uh, get this off and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So this is a first for me. I've never seen all the ones I've been working on. This is actually together right here. So while I'm rewinding this, I can actually push it back into the middle 
and it'll actually stay. Most of the newer ones, if you undo them, you're gonna be spending a lot of time trying to fix what you've unsprung. Kind of like that mess right there. But we should be able to get this one back together. Fairly certain of it. This is what I was talking about with the newer ones. See how this is just completely came undone? The uh, That older one is wrapped so that whenever it's together, it's actually pinned where this one is not. So what you're wrapping these, you actually start from the inside and have to hold on to it the whole entire time, wrapping it nice and tight, and it makes it a whole lot more difficult. But we don't need this one anymore, I don't think. So we're gonna go ahead and toss this one, put it in here, push it together, Maybe, hold on. We gotta get this adjusted a little bit different. Now we can go ahead and see if it'll fit in this section right there. It takes some, some work trying to get that little booger in there. There we go. So will that return? All right, we'll put the center screw back in. And I think it probably needs more tension on there. But we'll find out in just a second. All right, so we got that. That seems to be working. That seems to work just fine. It's got a little bit of extra string. I wonder if we can get it to... There, we got it to pop around one time. So let's go ahead and reattach this onto the saw and we'll see how it goes. We got the fuel put in there, and uh, I mean, it's still dirty. We got it on run, and we'll, I don't have the top cover on there yet. The top cover is right here. We can put that on, but I'm not putting it on. We gotta figure out how everything goes back together. Well, that's cool. So I wonder if we fill it up with some fuel, if we can actually get it to to run. I had the, I had the brake on. Well, all right. Let's put some fuel in this and actually see if this thing will run. If it runs, I know that it needs a couple other items, but I mean that would be fantastic if it uh, if it ran. I don't really know. I haven't messed around with it enough to uh, actually know. Oh, the throttle came out of there. See, that's one thing is that I, it's so loose right here. Maybe I can hold it down there. Let me try to put this on, then we can maybe control the throttle. And maybe that piece won't pop out. All right, where are you at? How's this gotta go? All right, so that goes like that. 
This will go and sit down like that. We can get a screwdriver. Oh, I need an air cleaner on. What's stopping it on this side? This is an older chainsaw too. And they used to make these things indestructible. Now it seems like if you go on like marketplace or something, you can find chainsaws all the time. Man, it really, it really needs to have that throttle in better, better shape. So I adjusted the uh, low side, trying to see if we can get it to get some fuel into it. And uh, we actually got it to turn over on its own. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the high side as well. Sometimes those two can affect each other. And the way that I'm doing this let me see if I I've got my screwdriver in here and I've got I've got it all the way tightened down not super tight I just bumped it to where it was shut and I know that my image is on top so I'll go one rotation and I'll go two rotations and that should open it up and now let's go ahead and give it another start So as you can see, I'm fairly close. And I think that it's running on half choke. Never mind, it starts up on full choke. So I got full choke on. All right, so I'm bumping it down a little bit. I wanna see if that blade will run. That locked. Okay, so that's all right. So let's loosen that up. We got the full choke on. And we're gonna go about halfway. All right, now the choke is completely off. I want to see if it'll run. No, maybe not. All right, let me uh, get some more fuel into the lines, and by doing that, I'll go ahead. And I've got my uh, screwdriver into the low side. I'm giving it one full rotation again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take that carburetor off and give it a good cleaning and uh, see if we can get it to run after that. We're at the bench again, we're just taking it apart. These are the cover and the diaphragm. And I don't believe that I've ever been in here before on this one. I don't recall taking it apart and seeing the different pieces that are in here. And right now I can see, I don't know if you guys, how well you guys can see it, but there's a bunch of debris in that little filter right there. And as I'm putting stuff into the carb cleaner, I've got the idle screw uh, and the pump gasket and I'm pulling this off and look at what I find it's like major dirt or something stuck right onto the top so this definitely needs to go into the uh, carb cleaner to get cleaned up because this is really look at how dirty that is just moving that around so this will sit in for about a half hour to an hour and then we'll go ahead and take it out and try to reinstall and fire it up again. Now we've gotten everything out and I've already went ahead and blown everything off and everything looks a lot cleaner. 
the filter is a lot cleaner i mean that's like perfect now so hopefully when we get this thing put back together it will run without any issues whatsoever all right so just like before we have to reverse everything on here when putting the carburetor and this air filter or air cleaner adapter back together you have to get uh everything's very precise on this i've i've found out it's not just like stuck and slapped together like uh most other things you actually have to put the pieces together back in order or it doesn't work and if you tighten these two screws down then it's very hard to get this one that holds the thing in place which is kind of I mean, it makes sense but you have to do everything in a certain order or else it doesn't want to go together right and i've also went ahead and made sure that uh my high and low screws were backed out both of them two full turns um, and that's just a good starting point for these we go that is what i'm talking about man that thing is loud that's a lot more powerful than either this little craftsman right here or this little baby echo now let's get this thing going again see if we can keep it running Alright guys, so I've been digging in this and trying to figure out why in the world I keep on losing um, my, why it keeps dropping out like it's uh, starving for fuel. And I don't know if I'm going to get you guys to see it. Oh, where's that? I'm not going to be able to get you guys in there to see it. But uh, after looking through this a little bit, what I discovered is that the hose, while it seemed extremely long, while the hose seemed extremely long up top, I had absolutely no hose in the fuel tank, which means that the, uh, there's no filter on there or anything like that. So I have to take this back off, shove the hose back through here, and then put a, a fuel filter on there. And this is what I was talking about. The uh, I just went ahead and pushed a bunch of it out, and now I have a uh, spot that I can put a uh, fuel filter onto it. And this is awfully soft. I'm almost wondering if I should just go ahead and change out the whole entire line, but I want to make sure it runs first. So we'll push that back in there. Now we should have continuous gas and it shouldn't, per se, run out of fuel. So let's go ahead and once again, start it up and we'll see if it'll, if it'll last because it was just getting fuel shook into it and then it was starting up. So now, and now we should be able to actually tune the carburetor and i'm going to go ahead and readjust the the carburetor for like the 1500th time one turn out on each of these because that time i had the a time before i had the choke completely on and it was still kind of running and now um now i had the choke off and it died again so we'll try it like this.
Alright, so I had to have the choke on. So that means I had to close off fuel because it was or the airflow because it wasn't getting enough fuel. So now we'll open up that low side. Another turn. We'll see how it does now. Well, that did better. Um, and now I think I'm at the point to where I can just probably fine tune that carburetor now that I know I've got good airflow or good fuel flow now to it. Um, so I'm just gonna mess with that and see uh, how we can get it going. You guys see that it's got uh, good, the oil pump is working. You know, you see that the chain's running. Um, everything works on it. It's just that carburetor that needs some fine tuning. Um, possibly needs to uh, be replaced, but let's see if we can get this dialed in and see how it cuts. We're on the final attempt for it tonight, um, just to see if it will even out on its uh, fluid intake, the gas intake, and uh, the air mixture. See what's going to happen with that, um, and we're going to see if it will stay idling. It is 9:40 at night right now, so I cannot let this run for very long. We're going to just see briefly if it's going to start up and stay running. So here we go. Hopefully neighbors don't get mad. Well, we can't keep on doing that. <laughs> We're gonna have to end on that one. Um, I'll probably end up messing with it some other time. I'm not too worried about it. I did get it running though. That was the main goal for the whole entire night or the whole entire day is just piddling back and forth, trying to get it put back together, trying to figure out why in the world it's not running and uh, but it's running now. I just have to figure out the uh, the whole carburetor issue and the uh, fuel air intake ratio. So, uh, you guys have any suggestions? That'd be awesome. Um, like I said, I really want to get this one running and running good. It's got a big 20-inch bar on it, and uh, I mean it's Husqvarna. It's gonna last a while if we can get this thing going good. Uh, needs the anti-vibe pieces I've mentioned before, but that's not a big deal. It's like six seven dollars for the whole entire set So if you guys have any suggestions or tips, you know leave them in the section down below as always. Thanks guys for watching and uh, We'll see you on the next repair